All right, this goes out to all you fitness and health people on social media. When you comment under people's pictures or videos or you talk to people online, act like you're in the gym. Why am I saying this? Because 90% of you wouldn't say the stuff you say online in someone's face in the gym. In fact, if I manage a gym, I kick 90% of you out of my gym. Unfortunately, we say things on social media we wouldn't say in real life because in real life, you get punched in the face, you get kicked out of a fitness place. And that's just the bottom line. So look, our goal as fitness leaders is to unite all of us so we can fight the agenda. What's the agenda? Getting everybody poor health, making everybody feel like crap. We want to oppose that. So when we find you on social media, making your stupid comments because, uh, you know, you wouldn't do that in real life, like shame on you. Mm. We're all here to help people. Remember that. Isn't it so interesting to see how brazen people have gotten over the years of being anonymous? Did you see uh, the comment I just got? Far away? I thought he was originally talking about that. You're talking about something else. Yeah. yeah. I, I just but got, that one really makes me mad. I dude. just got I was showing Sal this uh, before I even knew that he was going this direction. Um, this person, and I normally don't comment. Like when people just say stupid shit, I don't pick up the brick, as Casey would say. Um, but because it was under my goddaughter's photo that I posted, it got to me. I was just like, you know, you're not going to say some stupid shit like that. I'm not going to let you know how stupid you are. But they made a comment because obviously while we were on vacation, the episode played where we had the conversation about Andrew Tate, which right. we had like a week mm, ago. Right, 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 right. right. So that had just played. So somebody got on there and made a comment about, uh, you know, how do I feel about her? working for Andrew Tate when she's 18 years old at like uh, under a picture of her with him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what? She's fucking, know, she was, she one and a half years old or whatever like that. Right. So I had to say something about what a stupid comment is. And you know, it's so funny because the type of person wow. that would make this comment would also say something like that. Right. Like yeah. your daughter ends up on webcams or your daughter ends up stripping on a pole and you would be the tool that would blame somebody else for that instead of looking in the mirror and going, I fucked up as a dad. Like mm -hmm. just, that is a type of person that would make that comment. It's just so funny to me. It's just like, not only is that a stupid comment, but you don't even realize how much you out yourself on how weak you are, that you would blame another person for your daughter joining somebody's webcams or getting up on so, a pole. So here's, so wow. this is such an interesting uh, conversation. I just watched a video, Jordan Peterson was talking about this. And it blew my mind. I can't remember specifically. They call it the triad of personality disorders. Narcissism is in there. Being a sociopath, I think, is part of it. But anyway, it's, it's like these kind of people who have no empathy are hyper-narcissistic and then something else. These people are very dangerous in society. And he says that society will always have about 3% of the population that way. If it gets too big, then problems start to happen. They get weeded out. But it always sticks around 3%. On social media, it's far larger. On social media, the one the people that get all the attention are exactly those kind of people. Now, why do they get that much attention on social media? In the real world, if that is who you are, you get called out pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Like, pretty quickly, there's consequences. It takes all the air out of the room, and all the attention goes there because there's a problem now. Yeah, so either, I mean, you know, threats of violence, of course, that's obvious, but you'll get shunned, kicked out of a restaurant, kicked out of a of a friend group or whatever, because you're not anonymous. It's, it's, it's real life. Now this reminded me of our space. Uh, you know, this happens to us. Obviously we're on the top of the, you know, when it comes to the fitness food chain, especially in podcasting, we're at the top. So it makes sense that people are going to try to gain notoriety by, you know, grabbing onto our coattails and then making a comment or trying to say something that we said was wrong. And here's why we're better and whatever. And this happens mm -hmm. and it's not a big deal. I get it. This is how you want to get attention. And, I just don't think it's the right way. But I thought about it and I said, you know, it's funny is that these fitness people who try to do this would never do this in the real world. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if we were running a seminar yeah. and I was talking about the benefits of, let's say, squatting, deadlifting, and pressing, and then some, no way a guy in the back would stand up and be like, you know what? That's not a functional pattern. You got to make sure you do, you run and, sp you know, and, yeah. and sprint. And, and then why wouldn't he say that in person? Because then I'd say, no, you're right. That's also functional. Uh, squatting, deadlifting, and pressing is also functional. This is all, but they would only say it online because there's no rebuttal. Right. They get to be anonymous. They get to look and act like a certain, like like they're a particular way. When in real life, you just come across as an asshole. And um, we're going to talk about what we agree upon uh, and what we have in common with this. And that's uh, that's kind of the point that I'm trying it's to make here. It's not a dialogue. He's just making a pure statement and then yeah. just dropping the mic. Well, it's <clears throat> what's challenging about it is that going back before social media existed, um, Making comments on like that uh, in in 
the public or in society, uh, you potentially risk getting your ass kicked, right, or harmed by that. So society keeps it kind of in check. Or you, yeah. at the very least, you look at the person's face when you right, say right. something, and so then you got to deal keeps with you, that. It keeps right. you. It, it keeps those people somewhat in check, which is why it probably keeps it down to three percent. The problem with social media is it actually feeds that algorithm, yes. right? Yeah. So it not only does it like hold a place for those promotes people, it. but it, yeah, it promotes them and actually causes there to be more because it rewards that person. It rewards the person who's posting and creating that controversy with more people following, more likes, more comments, more views. Yeah. Like It's all extremism. Mm, it, it, even, even worse, this gets even worse than that. In real life, if you're in a group of people and there's that guy, we've all known that guy who boasts about how great he is and how his opinions, and he's so virtuous. Yeah. At first, you're like, wow, that's a great guy. But very quickly, you're like, he does nothing. All he does is talk. He's actually done nothing to help anybody. He's a fake person. I don't want to ha hang out with him. On social media, nobody needs to see any actions. It's all about your opinion, and yeah. that's how you show your virtue. It's all about, oh, I'm so enraged by this thing that happened, and look how good I am because I'm enraged. And but we have no way of knowing, do you really care in real life? Like, you're so mad about you know homeless people but in real life you walk by 50 of them every day and you couldn't care less you're just saying this on social media or you you care so much about the environment but you fly on a private jet everywhere whatever so my point with this is is that it it actually takes the worst of us mm -hmm. like you said adam and it puts them at the top yeah and what's happening is it's causing all these issues and now for us uh there's an anti-health industry that's out there we've talked about this before. I don't think that they're all necessarily organized, but these are organizations, corporations, governments, and people who benefit from people having poor health, either because yeah. you buy more of the products, you rely more on them, you're or you're sick more and dependent, and dependent. we can sell you products for that. Right. Or it's easy to manipulate you because now you're more, you're depressed and anxious and fearful and all that stuff. And what they're doing right now is they're pointing to fitness social media and they're saying things like, um, it's an intolerant group. They, uh, you know, it's toxic masculinity, yeah, fat shaming, fat shaming. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's true. Not in gyms though. Not in the real world on social media. Social media. It's true. Mm -hmm. Fitness, social media is how they're, they're weaponizing it and using it against those of us who really are trying to help people. So the, the reason why I'm saying this message is if you are on social media and you're a trainer, a coach, a gym owner, or you're just trying to help people in genuine ways, remember that don't fall in the trap because they're using it against us. <laughs> and we're not helping anybody by fighting each other in that way and talking about each other in that way and ridiculing each other. Like, you know, the litmus test is this. Would you say this in the gym yeah. to somebody or about somebody in the gym? And if the answer is no, then I wouldn't do it online yeah. either. Like we need any more divisiveness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like well, it's just, it's baffling to me. It's baffling to me, especially if you're in an industry where you're trying to, authentically help people yeah, and and do something like positive. Like you're going to now like try to cattle herd everybody into like one way of thinking exclusively, even though you may have some value, you're going to, you know, shit on other very valuable methods that uh, uh, doesn't fit within like your parameters of what you created. So what's, what's the fallout look like? Like, so there, there has to come a point, right? Cause I think that that percentage that is 3% out in society, but on social media is a much larger percent. I think that percentage is growing too. Yes. I think we're, we're going the, the opposite direction that we probably want to go. It's encouraging it. So, actually. yeah. And so inevitably, I think there's going to be a fall. You know, what it reminds me of only people that grew up in the Bay area will get this analogy. Um, so I, I remember in my twenties when a new nightclub would come downtown San Jose Oh, I know and it was know. always awesome. Like you were so excited this for the club. first year and the first year <laughs> it would crack and it would be a great, party. it would be a great spot. But then what would end up happening is slowly over time, thugs, gang people, just people looking to cause shit would make their way in there and then end up ruining the place. Yeah. It would become a place where you never, yeah. you didn't feel safe anymore. There was always a fight going down or someone starting shit. This it's is like, like an inside joke, the cycle of the nightclubs in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. It was, and it's, it's been like, and so, I, and that what to me, what that highlights is when this, this small percentage of people that don't represent the majority end up overpowering the, the majority because they're louder or more obnoxious or cause more problems. So wouldn't that same thing probably happen with social media? Is it going to become a point 
where and I almost feel like that 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 mood is kind of in, yeah. in the air right now I where agree. people are more and more people are like ah fuck it I'm off social media or I don't post that often or like I already feel like there's this movement away from it and I think that is why yeah I agree with you I think there's I know more people now who are like I'm done with social media yeah. or I only follow these pages or I'm very careful with how I set up the algorithm because it's uh, you know it's toxic or, or poison um, I mean I get that you know it's it's sad because our brain doesn't decide it's, it's hard to decipher real versus online in the sense that if I see for example here's an easy example if all I look at all day are pictures of perfect male bodies, my brain doesn't realize that I'm looking at a rare male male body. It thinks that that's, a, that's common. So then I'm going to look at myself without realizing it and judge myself based off of that ideal, which in the real world, you know, guys with six pack abs are rarer than millionaires, right? This happens to girls, especially young girls where they'll get body image issues because rather than walking around the real world, they're on social media and the brain is perceiving that as that's reality. So the same thing is true with like people's opinions, people's fake virtue signaling, how people are like the real world is not like that, but your brain doesn't know that. So mm -hmm. when you're in that all the time, my wife is really good at checking me with this. Like I'll tell her about like this. Did you see that guy that did that thing or the person who says whatever? And she goes, Sal, she goes, how many times have you met someone in real life like that? And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, you're yeah. Right. like, you're right. Like you can find anybody online, you know, any crazy person online, but in real life, you're right. I've never run into, I've never run into a guy who spent $20,000 making himself look like a dog. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going viral now. Did you guys see that? The yeah, Japanese man? I know. Yeah. What? Did you see that? No, no. Yeah. There's this guy in Japan. It's really elaborate It's like doing costume, surgery to, to make himself look like this crazy I costume know if he or did whatever. surgery, but yeah, he definitely went all in. Well, it? I remember when- To make the, himself look like a border Well, you remember when border like the, the, the lizard people started becoming a thing, right? Where like literally not the like the lizard people I you guys refer to. I want a bingo board of crazy shit. People that you would know, like, like what's do the next? surgery on their tongue so it was split and then make their eyes all like look like it's like i mean but i've never seen that in real life no yeah, yeah, yeah but this no. guy literally <laughs> made himself look like a dog yeah and then someone took him for a walk and he was like this is what i've always wanted to do I've always wanted to be dude a dog. i mean <laughs> but you know it's like if you see that crazy stuff all the time you're like oh my god what's happening i've never seen that in real life you know? so like the inception of of social media like this is kind of this is my thoughts going into it from the very beginning was like they're just highlighting like the craziest wildest like shocking thing like whatever somebody was thinking was like a very small portion of the population was even had those thoughts to begin with it starts shaping the culture to the point where reality starts mimicking what we're seeing online to where people sure. think this is the really the, this is reality yeah. it's not reality this is this is false yeah. this is a, a faux Fabricated. reality by the way i, I want want to be clear like we fall for this all the time i fall for this all the time that's how hard it is to be aware of what's going on i'm pretty sure i've made comments online that i wouldn't make in real life and i'm just self-reflecting and trying to really stop and remind myself like why are we here what are we trying to do there there's definitely this anti-health industry with this agenda we've talked about it many times on the show and it's it's getting worse and worse and they're weaponizing social media against us uh, highlighting the worst of fitness as it as if it's the most of fitness when in the real world it's not like people who actually go to gyms and actually work out and actually know the members and real gym owners and real trainers and real coaches like that they're not like that the, they none of them are like that the ones that are like that are the ones that are on social media and that's all they do they don't do yeah. anything else um and they, again this like back and forth like Oh, you say the squat is the best? That's such an unfunctional exercise. Like in real in real life, would you walk up to me and say that if I was giving a seminar? No. So you shut up, douchebag. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. You. And if you did, we would have a discussion about it, and we would probably agree on most things. On a lot of things, I if know. you're genuinely interested and educated. I feel like fitness. I try. I try and lead with that foot when people act, question me about other other fitness people's content. Is just like, well, there's there. I, I always try and be like, yeah, there's some truth to that. You know. Yes. There, I mean, the way he's stating it is to grab attention and to you know, cause controversy and to get likes and follows and views. Um, but you know, I could argue that case. I could also argue the opposite, which is in many cases in health and fitness. Like yeah. I feel like there isn't one That's way because ping so many ideas with each other. Yeah, there's so many ways right. to skin a cow. You have to consider mm -hmm. the effectiveness of a particular form of exercise by itself, then the effectiveness as it's applied to the person, 
then consider their psychology and their preferences and their fitness history. Um, and then there's probably other things I'm not even mentioning, but just those three things right there make how you use fitness uh, and how you improve your health so nuanced and unique that, uh, you know, arguing over which exercise is the best. I mean, we can have discussions about it, but there's cases. Oh, look, I'll tell you right now. There are definitely cases where a leg extension is better than a barbell squat for someone. I, I, 100%. I could, fi I could find somebody sure. and I could bring them in and there could be a, a situation where I'm like, oh yeah, this person, leg extension is better for them than a barbell squat. Yeah. Um, so it's very nuanced. And again, it's like, would you actually say this in the gym? Probably not. Yeah. Well, if you're not already considering that there's an individual variance, you're a shitty coach. Yeah. You yeah. Know, bottom line, yeah. if you're going to make blanket statements and generalizations that this is the only way, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. yeah. All right, today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic, the original one. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale on MAPS Anabolic Advanced, one of our newer programs. This is a very, very potent muscle and strength building program. It's half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change directions here. You brought up uh, Andrew Tate uh, in, in in the discussion, and yeah. I just saw him do another interview, and he made a really good point that I'd like to to, to bring up on here. Oh, now you're gonna quote Andrew Tate, boy. This has come full circle. No, for, no, this has come up. full circle for me. <laughs> come on, sir, let's hear it. No, Since no, you no, brought let's it, hear it, Andrew. What no, do you say, no, huh? No, no, no. <laughs> listen, listen. It's his bravado that turns me off. Uh, you, know, you know the big, don't worry. Just, right, just quote right. the man. Go right. ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear, let's, let's, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen. So there's a video of him circulating. It's going viral of him talking about like how to manipulate girls and doing webcam and how you treat them. And he got confronted in an interview about this and he goes, and he's, he made two comments that I thought were really, I mean, they're, they're correct. One, he's like, man, th uh, they have scrubbed through my content over the last 10 to 15 years, so hard. He goes, and that's what they could find. He goes, I don't think anybody would pass that litmus test. That's true. Like everybody well, watching especially, this right now. Especially somebody who's put as much content as like say us or someone like him up. Like there is a lot of stuff we've said and out of context could be could look, could look really real bad, bad. for sure. 10 years ago yeah like, could you imagine if the average person was if, if we were able to like investigate their last 10 years mm -hmm. how many skeletons we'd be of able course. to find and shit people change and they grow and all that stuff he said that so fine whatever i think the video that was 10 years ago is like oh that's terrible sounding but he makes good points i guarantee i said some shit 10 years ago that if it was put on video I'd be embarrassed as hell. So that's, you know, a hundred percent. And then he said this, which I thought was also, and we've gone through this when you're communicating. Cause that video, when he made it, it was, a, it was a, not to the internet. It was to his a private group. group. Yeah. It's private group. It's yeah. like 50 people. He's like communicating to 50 people is different than when you communicate to 50 million and 50 private people, private. Yeah. He says there's far more responsibility mm -hmm. when you have that much influence. We felt that like, if you listen to our early episodes, we had like, you know, 300 people listening. Uh, so it's like you're in our living room smoking a joint with us. It's a totally different conversation. And now we have 10 million people listening. We have a different responsibility. And right. so we have to kind of think to about- To be a little more calculated. Yeah, and you have yeah. to be careful with how you say certain things because you have a responsibility. He made those two points. I thought they were they were on point. It was, well, it was I mean, in to, to piggyback off what you're saying, it, especially when our desired outcome, this is talking about us, right? It was to help as many people as possible. Yes. Right. If we just wanted to make a fun podcast where we said crude jokes and got high and had a good time, if that was the vision, like we would have stayed the course that way. But ultimately it was like, can we reach and help as many people as we possibly can? And that was the way we wanted to disrupt the like, industry. Let's be effective. Yeah. And, you know, we uh, admittedly, uh, you know, used the shock and awe approach to get attention early on because that was the way that we thought we could get attention. And it did. It gave us a little bit of traction because we'd say these outlandish things, but then we'd come, then we'd say this really smart stuff related to health and fitness that was counter the the, the norm and message. So, yeah, it helped the beginning, but then we hit major plateaus of not being. Able to, I mean, how many times did we get emails back in the days like, "Oh, I love your show, but I have kids in the car, I can never listen to yeah, it." I want to show my. Mom oh, I want to show my mom, yeah. or I want to show my sister, but they. The, I mean, the, the the profanity and this and the topic sometimes are so. It's like. You know, and we agreed we didn't want to change who we are, but at the same time, too, it's like that it's no different than uh, 
how I was as a coach and trainer. I never, I don't mm-hmm. ever believe I changed who I was, but I also, but I most certainly was respectful of who I was communicating to and how I would talk to my, you know, 65 year old yeah. rabbi that I was training versus my, you know, 18 year old kid that the I was training. The ability to read the room. Yeah. That's all it is. Self-awareness. Yeah. 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 Social yeah. awareness. Yeah. The message is the same. How you communicate the message changes. Yeah. If you want to be effective yeah. and, and effectiveness is defined by like. And then, and then add in like you talk about sheer numbers like that. I remember the first time that like it really really like dawned on me, like, God, the amount of people that are listening at one time at all times, there's a minimum of 150 to 200,000 people listening to an episode. When you you stand in a stadium, the biggest football or basketball stadium you've ever been into, you're talking about 30 to 50,000 people, you know, five X that and go like at all times, this many people are listening to message. Of course, 20 people or entire five stadiums are not going to like how I said something or agree with it. It's just like, you can't make everybody happy at that point either. And you have a responsibility. Our responsibility is, uh, you know, like it always has been like, can we be as effective as possible at helping people? And if there's more people, the responsibility gets, uh, you know, much larger. Speaking of responsibility, I got to tell this story on the podcast. I, I think I told you guys already, but it's, I got to tell on the show because it's just, it's a top 10 experience in my life for sure. Really? Top, whoa. Yes, I told whoa, you guys already. Whoa, whoa. This was last, was it last week? Uh, we were, I was getting my hair cut by Vicky. Now, if people don't know Vicky, she cuts our hair oh, uh, every Monday. I totally She's forgot awesome. About that, actually. What's okay. the name of her shop? We got to give it a shout out. Faded. 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 Yeah. Faded in San Jose and in Morgan Hill. She's amazing. Okay. She's great, hilarious, hardworking entrepreneur, like no holds barred. We love her. So she's cutting my she's hair. She's the best. She's cutting my hair, right? Don't get her arrested here. No, right? no. I already asked her. If, if <laughs> oh, okay. I, could, yeah, yeah. I asked her, I said, can I tell the story? I she goes, yeah, you can tell the story. So yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. So she's cutting my hair and I got the, we got the editors, you know, uh, sitting at that, that bar area on the front. So you got four or five young guys under yeah. 25. Yeah. And they're all eating and working and he, she's cutting my hair and we're all having conversation at the same time. And, uh, we were talking about like, uh, she was talking about like events, like big events. She's like, yeah, I used to love going to big events, but then sometimes it gets a little shady and, you know, I get a little worried if I have my kids with me. She's like, that's why I'm always packing heat. And I'm like, yeah, are you always packing heat? She goes, come on. She walks over to her Louis Vuitton purse, pulls out a nine millimeter. <laughs> 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 Clicks so gangster. Pulls out the magazine, pops it back in, puts it back in her purse. I wish I could have seen Bro, the boy, hey. boy oh the boy's God. faces, hey, right? Dude. That'd have been so epic Bro, to see. Because she's like, how old is she? Five one? Like yeah. Pounds. Just, yeah. The, the the looks on their faces. Cute little firecracker. Yeah. Just, yeah. They were all like, I, it dude. was, you ever, you ever feel like the just collective what I, just anxiety what I, and like, you know? <laughs> She just when I think I couldn't like her anymore. You know I know. Saying? That she, one was she's awesome. She's such a boss. Just yeah. in her purse, she just pulls it out. Yeah. You know, she's like, and the guys are like, uh, everybody's like looking down at their work. Like, I'm going to pretend like, I'm, you know. So great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, dude, I have, I, was a, dying. I got a follow up story for you guys. So before we left the vacation, I told you guys about what happened to my sister, right? Which was fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. The guy right? ran her off yeah, the road. Yeah. It was super crazy. So I, I link up with my sister again. We're up here. This is so, this is now a week later after, or two weeks later after that incident had happened to her. And she lives in Reno. I'm up at, at the Truckee house and she's heading over to come see me. She's Ubering, right? Cause she's, her car's in the shop still getting repaired cause all the damage done to it. And uh, she's texting me. She's frustrated. The Uber driver's like driving like crazy slow and there's traffic. Cause she's only like 20 minutes from that house. Right. And, and she gets to the house and she's like, oh my God, I was sitting in the back of this Uber. I'm pissed off because it's, he's driving slow. He's got no air conditioning. And I lean my head back. I look to the right. And there's the motherfucker who hit me. No way. In traffic, right next to her. He's got the markings of her car on the side of it, everything like that. No way. Was she able to read Bro. Him? Yes. She, even if she goes, how crazy is this? She goes, when the, the officer Karma. did my report, he kept saying like, are you sure it wasn't a white car? And she's like, I know it wasn't a white car. He's like, are you sure? Because you have white paint on yeah. it. And he's like, she's like, no, it was this, this champagne color, this and that. And she goes, sure as shit. He had a white panel all the way around. Oh. And you could see my red marking on his white, like all the marks are all still there. She goes, and I got his license plate. I videoed him. I got everything. Oh, wow. Hell yeah. yeah. That just Justice. happened. That just happened. So you got to let us know what happened. I know, yeah, I know. Exactly. I, I was Take texting her before we got on air because I wanted to hear what the update was. So her, her husband, she did that. She sent it over to her you husband. You want to put his license plate online? She on, has, to, on, she on has to go in there. If, <laughs> well, what was great, which was I'm yeah. super proud of Tom, for her husband, for, for you know having the wherewithal to make sure of this. 
that, you know, this was so traumatic for my sister that he's like, listen, this is not just a hit and run. This was like, he tried to harm her. Right. Like, I want to make sure that this was an attempt at, at her right. on top of that. So when they filed the report, it wasn't just a classic hit and run, which you know, hit and run's an accident. Yeah. He was purposely trying to hit yes. her, which is yeah. attempted. That's I mean, right. It could be a assault. It's assault yeah. with a deadly weapon. Right. Yeah. So it was filed as that. And then, of course, it was just like, oh, they didn't get, they're never going to find this person. It was like, they didn't get a plate, they didn't get anything. It's not, and we all know how that works. It's not like they go out searching manhunt for this what a, person. What right. a gift. How serendipitous oh, was that, man. right? And she was, the crazy part was like, she was getting so irritated in the car. It was hot and the guy's driving so slow. And then she look, leans back and there's the dude right next to her. Wow. So she got video of it. You know what's funny about that story? Is, oh is, my God, the rage. That I was oh, like, well, so, you know, I don't, so I don't, when she I looked, scar. What, she said she actually kind of got a little traumatized because when she leaned back and looked to her right, it was the same angle and direction she saw him right before she hit. Wow. Oh, so man. she had this kind of like flashback of, oh my God, was this happening to me again? And then kind of yeah. came well, to and thank, realized. Thank God she wasn't with Vicky because that shit was. <laughs> <laughs> handle that yeah hey how crazy is that though because part of it is she was so mad that she was stuck in traffic yeah so now she's like that's why that's what, well that's what she said she's like i would have he would have never caught up to us had this guy just been driving normal in the normal lane but because he was driving so slow and he kept letting everybody pass him by she goes wow, dude. he ends up pulling up right next to her and she's like oh my god we would i would have never seen him had he not been doing that so she's like after that i didn't say anything dude that, so that's a because it was filed before because she explained everything, and he still has the marks on the car, that dude's probably, he's done. Yeah, he's, he's probably done. gonna it, be it's too much. There's too much evidence. She's like, you could see the dent, you could see my car color on the white, and she goes, now it ex now I understand why the cops saw the white, and that was all in the report too. So like, wow. I mean, she's got him. She's got him dead to right. So now it's just a matter of what, what do they a do. Gift. So I know that That's amazing. He sent over all the work. She has to actually go down there, I guess, file some more stuff and and turn it all in. But I mean, I think it's gonna be pretty cut and dry. I mean, they're going to be able to put his license plate, be able to get his address and know where he's at. That's what you get, dude. Knock on his door. And wow. And hit and run is a big deal already. Ar it that's is. a huge deal. Yeah. Is yeah. that a felony? Ar I think it's an automatic felony if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. Hit is, she, is she in Nevada? Yeah. I wonder what the Nevada, if it's different. So Nevada. hit and run's a big deal already and then you add in the fact you try to run somebody off the road. That's a whole different they, category. And they caught your shit. Ooh. Oh, man. Right. So what he might get away with is a hit and run. So he might get away with saying it was an accident, right? If that's someone the, gets hurt or killed in the accident, then it's a felony. Okay. Yeah. So oh, that would be the part that he might be able to debate is he might be able to be like, no, it was an accident. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I wasn't trying to on purpose. Mm -hmm. That might be the only thing. So in which case, you know, we'll, we'll put his license plate online on the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, I, think, I think karma's coming, man. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. He'll, he'll get his own. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, here, here's another karma story for you. I thought that was hilarious. So, you know, the big lotto just happened, right? The billion dollar one oh, that everybody's been I talking saw about. That. So I, I don't know. It sent me down the rabbit hole of reading lottery stuff. It's a bunch of dorks we are, right? Stuff like this happens, and I, I go down the rabbit hole. So I come across this story of a famous lottery winner in Cleveland, and I don't know how many years ago this was. This was a, this was a while back. So this is an old story, but I never heard it. I thought it was fun to share. So this guy wins the lotto, and before it gets announced on television and everything like that, he decides what I'm going to do is call all my family and friends and ask to borrow $4,000 from them before he they find out that he won the lottery. Wow. And so Just what find so out. Bro, what about talk about 3D wow, chess, right? Yeah. How smart was that? So he calls up all and of course everybody's like, "Oh, sorry, things are tight." Yeah, then Can't. he wins the lottery. Then he wins the lottery and now nobody fucking bugged him. Nobody asked for any money. Talk brilliant. about brilliant. Brilliant move. What a brilliant move. Wow. Wow. I know. I was like, I never heard of that. And I never thought, and I've always That's thought like, move. man, everybody knows like you call, I don't care if it's a lottery or you famous or you're an athlete. Yeah, everybody comes out of the woodwork. Yeah. All of a sudden the family and friends, everybody, you know, just expects you to get like, but to make that ninja move where you go reach out to all of them first, trying to get somebody to loan you money. Inevitably, everybody turns you down. Oh, it's all cool. I won yeah. the lottery. Hey, watch that. Now be the move. <laughs> somebody asked me, hey, Sal, can I borrow? Yeah, sure. You get borrow four grand. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, how you been, man? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> you know? I thought that was great, though. Hey, speaking of 3D oh, chess. Funny. You guys see, okay, so Elon changed the name of Twitter to X. Oh, I just yeah. noticed that this morning my app had changed. Yes. So so here's the 3D chess part that I love. So he put up a big X sign on the Twitter headquarters in San Francisco. It's all bright and whatever. Apparently, he didn't get the right permits or whatever. What? So, but here's why it's 3D chess. So you guys know he's always, he's, he's, he's kind of been in conflict with 
San Francisco and California in general right, right, many times. Right. San Francisco in particular, they, they don't, it's a terribly managed city. It's a crazy Crime city. is out of control. It's spiraled into it, oh, suicide, into drug use, hell. and just stores have to lock up and chain like candy and deodorant. It's just insane. So he puts this up. San Francisco board of you know directors or whatever now trying to go after him. What do you think people on social media are doing? Texting, showing pictures. They're like, up. oh, yeah. you got all the time and energy to handle this, but you can't handle it. Yeah. Bro, it was, I feel like he did it on That's purpose. That's amazing. Yeah, do you see the the track uh, poop sightings in, in San Francisco? What? They what? have, they, okay, look at an app, app or it's something? It's an app, and you can report where you see, like, human shit, like, and you could see a map of just like brown, <laughs> like no <laughs> oh, way. Over. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, me either. <laughs> and I saw it and I was like, dude, this is so nuts. Like, and, and that's brilliant that, you know, it's like, it gives you something that you're tracking and paying attention to how at it? destructively <laughs> disgusting that city has become. The name is brilliant. It's called Snap Crap. <laughs> no way yeah dude hey, no i want to download it but I'm i don't so, live there i'm so mad we didn't come up with this app dude. i know right what a smart app it's and it, brilliant. What a great way to bring it's literally awareness. documenting it too everywhere like ever there's a place where there's human defecation there's like dude homeless have run rampant in bro that city, my dude. my ex-wife took uh my older <clears throat> kids i don't remember they were gonna go watch a show and they had to park. They parked somewhere, and they were going to walk to where the show is. And it was only like a street or two down. Yeah. And she, so they hadn't been in San Francisco for a while. And she says, "My kids told me the story. They're like, mom asked a police officer to walk them because she looked at the street. She's like, I can't walk down there with my two kids. Yep. And she's like, the city's gotten so bad. So like, for I them would, to I come after him, sell, when I, was up there. I would sell my house so fast if I had a house in San Francisco because you you add in it's the largest mass exodus of all the cities in the country. Yeah. Okay, it's that so that there's more people leaving there than anywhere else in the country. You also factor in it's it's part of the Silicon Valley, right? So mm -hmm. San Francisco, Bay, San Jose, Bay Area, right? All kind of Silicon Valley area. Yeah. Tech jobs, fifty percent of people have returned back to office, so the office spaces are like empty all over the yep, place it's desolate it is only a, a thing is hanging on by a thread right now it's only a matter of time before that and how. then you add in the homeless stuff and the crime and the uh dude it's only a matter of time dude speaking of like different places so i was in what well, we were all kind of on vacation i went to with jessica to visit uh some of her family in arkansas mm -hmm. i'd never been to arkansas before either have I. and i've heard uh well first off i need to say this about arkansas so it's in the middle of summer I've never experienced humidity like that. Bro, listen. I try to warn you. <laughs> well, he was just in Florida the same time you were. Florida, so you yeah, we had both the same, had same similar, heat. Listen, very similar. Listen, yeah. I've been to Sicily, and Sicily gets humid. Yeah. But this feels like I felt like I was walking through water. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. you're walking, and the and you're like, the air's thick. am I in the ocean? Yeah. Like it's so humid, it's insane. Like my sunglasses, I literally was walking outside, and the whole thing, it was fog. I had to like keep wiping them. I couldn't How see. How crazy is that? It's so it was so like you're outside and my kids, my, my little ones are just glistening with sweat all the way. <laughs> and my son's hair is all wet. Like, did you go swimming? Yeah. Like what's going on? Yeah. And then the mosquitoes. being boiled alive? And mm. the mosquitoes, dude, are, are dude. The mosquitoes oh, there yeah. are relentless. But anyway. Okay. So enough of that stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, right? The people, you know, they have to say the people in the South are so friendly and whatever. Dude. It's real. It's true. It's real. They're, I had at they're least, the best. I had at least 10 experiences so it's not just one. So the first one that happened is I went to a That's gas station. That's how it was when we were in Tennessee. I felt the same way, dude. It was, Jeez. but when we were in Tennessee, we were in that one place. Yeah, sure, So I sure. felt like, okay, maybe a there's little, a bias. Sure. No, nah, I felt like everywhere you go. So I, I was in Arkansas for four days or five days, and I you know, I went to the gas station. I went to Walmart. I went to the you know grocery store. I went to shops. I took my niece and nephew out. And uh, so the first experience, I went to the gas station to get, I don't remember I was going to get like a drink or something. So I walk in, walk to the back, grab the drink, walk up to the front, and the lady looks at me. She goes, I'm so sorry I didn't greet you when you walked in. She's like, I saw you, but I was focusing on something else. So, hey, I'm apologizing. I'm, apolo I'm like, what? You're apologizing? What's happening? I've never had a gas station anybody say hi to me. Yeah. And you're apologizing? You didn't greet me? I'm like, this is like, a, oh, that's a one-off. Right? No, they wear ear pods here and they don't even look at you and they're just like, ugh. Yeah, dude. I went to Walmart because we had to buy some, we were going to buy like a high chair for the baby, a couple things. And I go in there and the lady who's ringing me up, we just start. She's like, start talking. She's like, oh, this is for, who's this for? So for my daughter. Oh, I got four kids. How old are you? Just wonderful. Then the lady in line behind me starts talking. We're having a wonderful conversation about children and raising kids. This happened like 10 times. I gave a tip, like a normal tip mm -hmm. when I bought some food uh, at this place. I gave like a normal tip. 
the, the kid came out, wanted to thank me for the tip. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate the owner. Owner's making sure, he's, you know, how you guys like the food. It's just a normal little restaurant. It wasn't yeah. like anything crazy. I could, it's, it's, it is different. Yeah. The it's people very, are very well, different. Well, you notice it because of the stark contrast of what That's we experience it. every day here. Like, waving just, at me, people driving, yeah. wave at you. you yeah. know? People I'm like, like flip me off for like waving at me. You guys feel <laughs> like, I'm like, what? I'm just trying to be nice. Let people in. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I had the same experience in Florida. It was funny. We, I mean, there's a bunch of things we did. Like I was like kind of like just running the whole time. It felt like trying to get uh, Everett to his event and to compete and do all this thing for gymnastics. He had fine. Like he, he got there for um uh, nationals what they call it. I was how do you do by the way he did great he um so he fourth, got like right? fourth in in three of what? the competitions so wow yeah so i was happy it's funny too and I'm, I'm proud of him i was really proud of him uh he was really like not okay about it he's like he was pissed he didn't get first oh you know? yeah and i'm just like he's off the tree what do they say I'm I'm like you know <laughs> like i get that like but you know like and then we talked about the lesson of that and what we need to do to be able to produce that type of a level of of excellence and uh we noticed what they did differently than him and we had a good conversation about that so it was like it was really good like i, I was glad that he was able to um kind of step back and really like assess that and like know like hey i could have done this i could have done that i mean he worked his ass off like in the gym uh like five six days a week double days to like prepare for this and like you know compete you know at a high level against everybody else in the country so i was i was proud of him but uh we tried to make you know a short trip out of it and do some fun stuff and so last minute like we booked this airboat <laughs> it was such a trip dude can i just Wait, tell these you the ones with the big fans yeah, yeah, yeah. that is oh can i just tell you i was hoping for like a character you know like if you if you anticipate like going an airboat in the swamps like <laughs> yeah. you want a guy that's like you know he yeah. looks like that kind yeah, of guy yeah, yeah. Yeah. he does yeah. he literally lived there so we got, we got the guy that he's got there's one island that was man-made in just swamp. hundreds of miles of swamp and he's there he has a three-story house like the top of it he built just so you could look out and like see and it was oh my god it was hot it was it was just it was like 100 degrees it was like 80 percent humidity something oh my god. it was just nuts melt your and, skin dude he had like pet alligators like <laughs> he's, we're like feeding them uh he had um he raises um turtles and so the kids like got to like get this bucket of turtles and then we're out there like spreading them around like, oh okay so i totally thought you guys were feeding the turtles to the alligators like yeah that's ruthless bro <laughs> no all these baby turtle, like okay, well, we got. If you saw his story, baby turtle, yeah, I the first, just posted that the first clip, no the context. first clip yeah. is alligators, yeah. like snipping up at the boat, some of like that. The next clip of them putting little fucking baby out, uh, baby turtles out in the water, and I'm like, are they feeding like, these fucking well, alligators? Nature is metal. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, it doesn't don't give a fuck. Wow, bro. these alligators are amazing. What, um, what do we feed them? Yeah. Baby dolphins? Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. Oh man, I'm not ready for that, uh, dude. I mean, the guy like literally lives there like, by himself. Nobody else. No family, no, like he's just there. Like, I'm like, what do you do? Isn't it crazy how different people are and how okay they are? Yeah. But, you know, it makes it, you feel kind of like, well, I mean, he's cool. Bro, he he's like swamp. a nice, really nice guy. Like very, outgoing. he trains like military and, and police and like law enforcement. And, um, he was just like a very cool guy, but like so bizarre for me. I can't even imagine like that lifestyle and like Dude, living like that. If yeah. the shit hit the fan, those are the people that would survive. <clears throat> like the rest of us would be yeah. dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? That dude would be okay. Yeah. The rest of survivalists, yeah, we, for sure. We, we wouldn't make it. Yeah. yeah. No. yeah. Now you were you were up in. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I was. I really disconnected this week. It was really nice for me to. Um, one of the things I love about being up there is that it's easy to to just kind of throw the phone to the side and 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 I, I mean I think I got on there. I might have posted a couple times some videos of some of the stuff. It was just was, all family time. All family time. Yeah, it was uh, up there with my. This is our annual trip that I do. This is now the the fourth year, fourth or fifth year in a row, same week, same time, same everything that we go with the same group. And it's cool because, I mean, uh, they, they we have uh, two, four, five. We have five kids under five there, right? So, And they've all been doing this since they were all born. Oh, that's a good time. Right. So it's kind of cool to watch every year, like the evolution of what the trip is like for us, you know, oh, yeah. like the first year where everybody's got, we got all these, uh, you know, walkers out and everyone's constantly like watching all the corners, the kids we're actually now at this age where the only, we only have one that is like a little, you know, one and a half year old, the rest are four or five plus years old. And so, you know, they kind of sit back in the back barbecue and have a drink and watch the kids run around and play. It's like, 
we get, we had that kind of moment where we're like we, gaining little freedoms. Yeah, well, we talked. Right? I remember us talking about it when we were all in the thick of it, right? When it yeah. was like full full court defense for all of us on kids, right? Like because they were so little, going like, man, one day we're all gonna be able to sit back here and have a beer and just let them let them roam and play. And so they're like they're like this close to like kicking them out the door and just go do whatever, come back in four or five hours. And so it was uh, it was nice. It was yeah, I know people talk about the those yeah, early stages, a whole like, oh my god, that's why I don't want to have kids. It's so hard. It doesn't last that long. You know, it's a, it's like you know, yeah, it's, you're gonna be in it for like season, five years, dude. and then yeah, and then you miss it. So so we I flew well, right, we flew to Arkansas with the two little ones. So we got my two and a half year old and my eight month old. And flying, you know, you got you have to take two planes because there wasn't a direct flight. Flying with two little ones is definitely a different experience, right? I flew back before them because they're still up there. I'm gonna fly back again and then come back with them so that Jessica doesn't come alone on the plane or whatever. So on the way back, I'm like, oh, I get to fly by myself. Like, this is going to be so cool and relaxing. I'm going to sleep or whatever. Within 15 minutes, I see parents with their little kids. And I'm like, oh, man, I miss my little kid. You know, I miss my little ones, you yeah. know? So I start playing with someone else's kids. And, you know, <laughs> I, I start missing them, you know? And it's just, it's so funny. It's day two for me. Day two. I've already figured this out. Like, so day one, you're like, yeah. Day one, it's nice to me. I, I don't know yeah. if you're on the same page. Oh, you need a break. Not. It's like, yeah. day one is like, ah. Oh, yeah, I needed like a day of like only being responsible for myself, you know. Right. And then by day two, I'm like, all right, yeah. I miss, I miss my. So guy. I want to ask you guys this. This is because I tell my wife this, but she doesn't believe me. She thinks I'm just being nice. When the sexy, the absolute sexiest thing that she does, like I don't care what she's wearing. Usually, she's wearing sweats when this happens or whatever. The hottest thing she does is when she's calmly and confidently being a mom with totally. the little ones. When I see her doing that, like I, I'm like, she's. I annoy her because she's like, get off me. She's it's so attractive to me. So we're flying there and she's like managing the kids. And I mean, I'm helping, you know, we're we're working together, but I'm watching. And then we get there and we were staying in um, what are they called? Trailers. So we're on her her mom has a little piece of land and we were staying on trailer. So it's not super comfortable for me. I'm not a big, you guys know this. I'm like I'm, you and I are kind of have this in common, Adam. I'm not a camping person. I don't like, you know, being <laughs> uncomfortable. I don't like that kind of stuff. But, you know, she's with her family. I see her playing with the kids and being with the other kids. And I'm watching her. I'm like, oh, my God, this is the most attractive thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I tell her this. And she's like, you're lying. I'm all sweaty and gross. I think that, I'm like, that I, is not. I think that is that way for, I well, I don't know. That's my experience. I mean, I when we had, even when she was pregnant, from the moment she was pregnant, most certainly when she had the baby, and then also to see the way she raised my son. Although I, I kind of knew it, but it's different when you see it, yeah. right? Like I knew that the the type of woman that she was before we ever had a child together. And I assume that, you know, I believe in the, how you do anything is how you do everything type of uh, mentality. So I believe that she would attack motherhood the same way she did anything else. But actually seeing it is, is a unbelievable turn on. And it's, uh, and what's really unique, or at least in my situation is that, that shifted a lot because the original thing that I was so attracted to was her independence, like her being a, a woman oh, who sure. self-made, uh, take care of herself, doesn't need any help type of, like that was like super attractive to me. I don't give a shit about that anymore. Seeing her be a mother is far more attractive to me. So that's really been an interesting dynamic in our relationship for that to pivot. Like yeah. That. So, cause I tell her that and she doesn't believe me. She thinks I'm being nice. Cause she's like, cause I don't have my makeup on. I don't have my, you know, I didn't take a shower or whatever. I'm like, honey, I swear to God, you could be like, like hair disheveled, whatever. When I see you do that stuff, it's the, it's like the hottest thing in the world. It's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's a lot of dads out there that know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is to the moms out there. If your husband tells you this, he's telling the truth because it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a real thing. I, I imagine women have the same thing. I mean, Justin shares about how, you know, that's how he gets his chore play like that. With <laughs> yeah. Him yeah. working on the house and fixing things up and keeping things in order like that. That's probably yeah. a really attractive, attractive thing for her, you know, to see that. I know so. I get attracted. Yeah, to lean into that. Fixing things. Justin yeah. fixing yeah, that I'm thing I'm able body. I can that's, do it. That's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Dude, I got to tell you guys that uh, we're, we're, we have Caldera mentioned in today's episode. And I'll tell you what, dude, that their oil, the second I introduce it to someone, they're so sold. It's yeah. not even funny. Yeah. If I show somebody it, so I was showing, you know, people like, hey, try this on your face. They put it on. That's it. Done. It's yeah. the best thing they've ever used. And these are people who use skincare products. And so I'm not talking about like me where I wasn't a big skincare product consumer. They're so sold. Like whatever they they did with that, specifically that formula, yeah. is, and then I tried their soap 
that, that you Oh, you finally used it. You d- you were not exaggerating. I was not exaggerating. What is up with that lather? It's the best lather ever. <laughs> it's like a Nothing dense, compares. It's Very like lathery. a dense, thick. It's not like big fluffy bubbles. It's like dense, thick. Uh, amazing. Like if like luxurious. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. So stupid, n- I've just, never, ever had a bar soap that lathers like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you try it? I don't have adjectives, dude. I'll be honest. <laughs> In this direction, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't this is unfamiliar territory. Did you use like, it yet? It gets me clean. Yeah. It's like, it's nice. It's smooth. <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. nice. Uh, I, don't know. I like it. <laughs> it's really I feel nice. good. Yeah. I mean, I think part of the the serum thing is like because I was I was concerned when we first obviously when we first started with them because I was like, hey, you know, is our, will our audience receive it? Is it something they're into? I'm into it, so maybe there's going to be a small percentage of people that are like me. I thought maybe that'll be enough. Like, but what it is, Sal, is I think that the first time you use it, you can already see a difference. That's what I mean. So that, like that's sold why. so fast. Right, right. It's not like- uh, well, I try this for a like week. Some products, like some products, supplements, for example, it's like, oh, you got to take it consistently and then man- look at this and manage that and maybe mm. this will feel better, maybe that And it's like, man, it's so subjective. It's like so hard to measure and be like, where this is like, oh, I put it on, I'm like, oh, wow, I can see the difference in my skin the very first time. And then it's compounding. The more yeah. consistent you yeah. are with it. The more, it's like the more, easiest product to yeah. sell because I'm just like, here, try this real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I want it. I'm like, or I'll send you some. It does yeah. require that. You got to yeah. try yeah. it. No, All right. Great I, I got to tell you guys some scary shit about um, the dystopian um, society that China is creating. Are you seeing what they're doing with their social credit system? <sighs> they're doing new stuff now because it's been scary the whole time. Bro. Yeah. So this is how crazy and advanced it's getting. If somebody calls you on your phone, so I'm going to get a phone call from someone. But that person has a below whatever number social credit system. Because so for people who don't know in China, you have a social credit number and the government decides what gives you better points or what takes points away. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's related uh, to things like uh, tickets, uh, paying back your debt, like credit or score, like comments that. on social media. Right, 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 or, right, right. I mean, it could be anything Talking bad about the state. Yes. Ooh. Yes. So it could be whatever they decide. It's a lot more than just stuff like that, right? So if somebody calls you on your phone with a specific credit score or the social credit score, your phone won't ring. It'll it'll alarm. So now everybody around you knows. And if you answer it, your score goes down by <laughs> simply talking to what? that person. Okay, wow. ready for this? Okay. It gets even deeper. They now also track you based on your score and on your phone. It will alert you if you're within a certain amount of distance from somebody with a low score. If you stay close to them, it will affect your credit score in, what, a, what in a negative way. In other words, screwed up way to live. In what other it, words, like you avoid. Oh shit! There's what a guy an over interesting there. experiment. I'm like so. How a, far do you think the Chinese like a bunch people of lab rats? Yeah. How how far do you think they'll let it go? Like, do you think at some point they're gonna be like, okay, this is way too? Well, they'll weird. let it go until it backfires. Like right now, the the reason why, I mean, it's real easy for us on the outside over here to look over and poke and be like, oh, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. But they, they wouldn't continue implementing it if they didn't see things that they thought were working. For example, like the as hard as they are with pushing education. So the kids, I mean, they're the kids are learning at a faster rate and accelerating in so many areas. So to them, it's like, oh, okay, this is proving what we're doing is working. And moving. So I think it's it'll go until it really blows up in their face until there's a big you know, revolution until someone pushes back really, really hard and you get chaos over it. Yeah. Cause like literally if it's you're going to start to isolate the, the, the that's society. what they're doing. Yeah, you're going to yeah, become sure. You, not only are you not able to, cause before what it was is you're not able to buy certain things. You're not able to get a train ticket. You're not able to get a plane ticket, but now it's going to be that people don't even want to be near you. So yeah. you'll be walking and people will go inside be their social shops. Pariah. Like, yeah, where are they going to hang out, bro? That's, Crazy. You know, like well, I, this whole underground, that's the thing. You're going to create a lot of underground, uh, you know, potential revolutionists. Maybe, right? It, that's like, what I feel like. What'll be really weird is like, so and I think I talked about this before, how we had a, an issue, Doug and I, on a on a, a payment that didn't go through. And oh, it was right. like an auto thing. And like, I mean, that my credit still has not got all the way back to where it was. And that was like seven, eight months ago. Yeah. And so imagine, and, and, so, and a lot of that is just the bureaucracy of all the people it has to go through right. in order for this auto payment to happen. And so it's like, this person has talked to this person, has talked about that person, has talked to this person. Oh, because it sold this to that bank. So that's got to happen in China too, where there's like misunderstandings. And so what happens in a situation like that, where all of a sudden now my score goes lower that I can't, I can't call you without an alarm going off. Like, and you're a friend of mine. And like, uh, just recently I was like, that's the situations that I think well, are going to well, be so here's Because people are going to say, well, people have been ostracized uh, for all of history, for whatever reason. 
But this is very different because who's controlling, there's people who are controlling this and they control the narrative. So if you have the wrong political view, if you have the wrong opinion, <laughs> if you didn't at, do that, whatever. You read the article that Doug just pulled yeah, up? Yeah, in China, you get a special warning before you call people who owe money, telling you to get them to pay up. So imagine you get a call oh from Justin. Oh hey, what's God. up, Adam? By the way, you got to pay back, Doug. Okay, don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. You know, I, I wonder how long, how far they're going to go before the dude, people are like, this is enough, dude. This is crazy. Wanna... I mean, what was it? Nazi Germany or like the, the Hitler youth, they'd get them to narc on their parents. And like, it was like, um, socially tried to, to construct it in a way where it was like, okay, let's get you to report people that you're seeing. This is like on steroids. This like, is all. So the part intense. that always shocks me and you, you made a great reference with Nazi Germany at the same time is that the amount of people that go along with it. Yeah, I mean, it's e again, it's easy for us on this side to be like, oh my God, it's so crazy. But what's even crazier to me is that there's millions of people that comply and agree. Yeah, it's so that's tyrannical. Even, it's, that's more crazy. Yeah, and like it's you said, like, from the outside, it's easy to see that. But when you're living in it and it's a slow drip and again, and this is the, mm -hmm. I guess this is what I get alarmed all the time and, you know, lumped in the conspiracy category, but it's just, I, I get um, I, I pay attention to signs and ways things move and, and how society is kind of shaping itself in a direction. And that's where it's like, we have to have firm boundaries and establish those boundaries or they're going to disappear. And once they disappear, they don't come back. What's, you know, what's it can be replaced with. Yeah. And so it's, um, I just feel like, uh, in terms of like a country and like the way that we, we have a say right now with the way that things are run and the, and the government and the structure of it, we can get involved. We can do things. We actually have the ability to, to say something, then say something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's, it's in, in what they do is they demonize the people that are always like my, you know, leave me alone. You know, uh, you know, these are my rights. Leave me alone. I don't want the government encroaching. People make fun of them, but they're the ones that are keeping things in check. I mean, it's just the reality. That's you want those people to say no. This is you've gone too far. And but yeah. by the way, they always sell these bad ideas uh, the following way: it's better for the whole, or it's better for society, sure, or this is better for everybody. You don't everybody. want to kill grandma, yeah. Right? That's that if, was used. That's how they always sell this. No, no, no. We got to do this because it keeps everybody safer and it's better for everybody. That's how they always sell it. It's never sold. Like we're gonna take away your, you know, your independence or whatever. Hey, so you know what I've been combining? I know you guys know I combine stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. I found a great combination of supplements that is like jet fuel. Really? Yes. So I do Organifi Peak Power, which is like their version of a pre workout, mm -hmm. right? We've talked about them before. Right? It's got caffeine in it, but there's botanicals and stuff in there that balances out the caffeine spike, so you just feel like amazing. And I took it with Pure. Together. Yeah. Together. Oh, wow. So Pure is not a stimulant. Uh, yeah, but no. But it does it does have a kind of a nootropic effect. What a combination. Wow. It's, yeah, dude. So it's, I guess it's I've kind of- the future or what? I've kind of done that. I've done like Pure <laughs> yes. before our podcast. And then like two, hour, two hours later, I take the, the peak. So that's not exactly together. But I mean, I'm getting the benefits of both. Oh, mix them together, dude. Really? Oh, yeah, bro. It's <laughs> fire. It is so, it is such a smooth, clean, like energy. It's so productive. Um, I mean, it's like euphoric borderline. So it's a pretty cool combination. Well, both those products by themselves are, are fire products. Yeah. So yeah. also shout out. I want to give a shout out. I've talked about this before on the show, but never an official shout out. It's a series that was recorded in the 1970s, uh, starring Milton Friedman. It's called Free to Choose. It was a life changing series that I saw about. I want to say 15 or more years ago on YouTube. And it was, for me, it was just profound. It's an incredible series. It's as relevant today as it was back when it was first aired. Um, and people have seen me wear shirts with Milton Friedman's face on them. It's, it's, that's why, because of that series right there. So check it out. Hey parents, uh, you want your kids to have good nutrition. You probably do because you listen to the show, but sometimes because kids can be picky, they eat some foods and not others. They have nutrient deficiencies or they're not eating uh, appropriate or optimized levels of nutrients. Well, there's a company that makes a children's vitamin. They're not gummies. They're not filled with sugar. They're not candy. These are legit vitamins with the appropriate doses. It's a company called Haya. This is the only multivitamin that we give our kids. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A health.com forward slash mind pump 
And on that link, you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Brady Thomas 2. How do you properly program abs? Okay, so phrased differently, how do you work out with your abs or put them in a workout? What should it look like? Type At of the end. I mean. Yeah, where yeah. do you put them in the workout? At the end. Oh, that's a, I'm glad you said that. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah if you're training your core... Uh, on a day that you train other body parts, you should probably do it at the end because you don't want to pre-fatigue your core yeah. and then do other exercises. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 your, that's your foundation. And I mean, I think that's, at least I think that's mostly where this this confusion comes from is like, where do I slot it in the workout? Because you're more than likely going to do more than just abs. Very few people just go to the gym and just do abs. You know, normally in yeah, order to- Yeah, because you don't want to have fatigue core and then do squats yeah. or deadlifts or press. So or I, I think the, right. the staple move is to just add it at, at the end of the routine. And then at that point, it's very similar to every other muscle. I mean, the more frequent you hit it, uh, the better. But you also got to modify intensity based off that. So if you're doing it three days a week- you know, you go moderate intensity. If you're only training abs once a week, you can go a little bit harder intensity. Um, but a lot of the same, it's a muscle. It's a lot of same rules ap apply. I think the one thing that I would just keep into mind is that it, it, it is your foundation in all movements. Like your core is always having to be activated and worked. And so you don't want to be doing these big compound lifts, overhead presses, even bench pressing, squatting, deadlifting, and have fatigued your core first. You yeah, want to do it Because then you're, you're yeah. basically increasing your risk of injury is what you're right, doing. Right. Um, I'd, I'd, I would like to address though some, some myths around ab or core training. Yeah. Um, one of them being, well, just generally speaking, they need to be trained somehow differently than other body parts in terms of reps and in terms of sets and frequency. The abs and the core respond to strength training like every other muscle in the body. There's not, they're not some unique different way to train them because they somehow respond better to, let's say, high reps or, you know, train them every day versus three days a week or two days a week like other body parts. It's the same. So if your, let's say your shoulders respond really well to sets of eight, Will your abs respond well to sets of eight? Yes, they also will. So will your obliques and the rest of your body. Strength training is strength training. Uh, that's the other thing I want to say is that uh, people think high reps um, are the only way to train the core. Now, I get where that comes from. It doesn't come from the fact that the core responds better to high reps. It comes from the fact that perfect form is very important when you train the core. Yeah. And training the core with, res with heavy resistance, you increase your risk of injury. Mm -hmm. And if you hurt, your low back, well, now you're, you're, you're not doing well at all. So, but heavy resistance is great for the core. So long as the form is perfect, that's tra That's true for the rest of the body, but there's special consideration, uh, I would say for the core, but it train like any other body part, good resistance, full range of motion. Um, you're probably looking at between a total of nine to 18 sets per week, one to three days a week, total of training. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I think that's why the uh, I think it really it requires like really good technique uh, when you go to load uh, these type of exercises to do an actual strength exercise with your core, um, whereas you can get away with a little bit more if you do like lower reps you know, or, or higher reps and more volume. Um, and so, yeah, you just have to be more deliberate uh, about like not totally incorporating your your hip flexors, getting that uh, good form and technique so your abs maximally uh, get that exposure. Next question is from Preacherman Joe. What is the best body fat percentage to be in for health? Oh, I love this question. This is a good question because- There's not an answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I mean, so the data does show when body fat percentage starts to become a negative- uh, in terms of health, okay. both on the low end and okay. on the high end. So for men, when body More fat clearly percentage- with women, I would say for sure. Well, it's just a different range. Yeah, yeah. So for men, once you start to get into the single body fat percentages, you start to see negative impacts on hormones, okay? So below 10%. Now there's an- in, I, I want to real quick- uh, right. Yeah, because you're going to get the guy who speaks up and goes, I've been 6% body yeah. fat for the last eight years and my health markers are amazing. Okay. This is general. This yeah. is, there's a wide variance with uh, individual um, in, in respects to body fat percentage. But generally speaking, if a man starts to go into the single digit body fat percentage range, you start to see hormone changes that are not favorable. Things like lower testosterone, higher cortisol um, levels throughout the day, stuff like that. Above- about 20% body fat is when you start to see negatives associated with high body fat percentage with men, both hormonally and uh, vascularly, 
um, metabolically. So it's above 20%. That's a huge ass range, right? Like 9% to 20% is a, is a, is a massive range. I also want to say that being fit and having a high body fat percentage is, is great. Yeah, not, it's not perfect, but being fit at any body fat percentage improves your health. So even if your body fat percentage is, you know, 27% as a man, if you're fit, in other words, you have good stamina and strength and flexibility and all that stuff, uh, you're, you're doing okay. You, you, you'd be better off if you got leaner, but you're a lot better off uh, than if you weren't fit. For women, when they start to go below uh, 16, 17%, you start to see hormone um, negatives. When you start to see, when a woman goes above 30%, then you start to see the negatives associated with high body fat percentage. Again, that's a big ass range. Mm -hmm. Really, it's like uh, you, there's a body fat percentage that seems to be best for you. That's within that range. Um, and being fit within that range is what you want. Not necessarily the body fat percentage because you could take somebody who's very sick and has a low body fat percentage. What I mean by sick is just chronically ill. And that, that body fat percentage says nothing about their health. And then you can see someone who's higher body fat percentage, but very fit. Their body fat percentage in that case also wouldn't say a whole lot uh, mm -hmm. about their health. Yeah. I feel like the, the, the best way or the best answer for this is that you will know better than anybody. I mean, there's that huge range that you're talking about. And then there's also this, uh, these outliers that actually even break that rule. So really it's, uh, you understand all these markers, like, uh, you're getting your hormones checked and seeing how, how balanced and healthy you are there. Uh, looking at things like sleep, like libido, yeah. um, like sustained energy throughout the day, mm -hmm. like how well you sleep, how well you get up in the morning, yeah. like all of those things, how productive that you are, like your stamina when you're working and you're doing things or you're doing physical activities, like there's all all those things. And Resistance this, to illness. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. How well you stay healthy without getting sick all the time. Like That's the one I notice when I get So going. it's like, yeah, when you, in, in your, when all those things are the best they've ever been for you, you're probably in that range for yourself, and right? And if you if don't it, look super shredded, who cares? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's how I've, I've been, uh, I've told you guys this before. I have felt healthier post, um, bodybuilding, you know, era time in my life than I did actually in that era. I mean, and then also things like you, you take account for, which I didn't even mention is, uh, like joint health, like yeah. your mobility and flexibility and control. And like those things matter too. So well, wouldn't you say too, I mean, you really, it, it boils down to if you've tried your best to, to get to a place where you've gotten in low percentage for you to even have anything to compare it to. I feel like there's not a lot of people even pursued that, uh, long enough, uh, to, to know the difference. Uh, and so it's like their normal is their normal. And then it, it's really bad, you know, from normal, uh, in terms of their health markers go so i i don't know it's it again this is such a subjective uh, yeah but i think that's such a great point you're bringing up right now that this is why i think everybody would benefit from getting themselves to the lowest body fat percentage they've ever been see what that mm -hmm. feels like just see what that feels, see what like. feels like because to your point which is more often than not people think that they feel normal or feel good but that's only because they've never felt great before yeah right their their normal or their good is what the, the best they've ever felt but they don't realize there's another level of feeling great because they've never leaned out to that percentage. So it, it would behoove everybody to push themselves to a body fat percentage that is leaner than they've ever been so they can feel that. And then they can go back the other direction and find out where is that sweet spot. You for know, me. one more thing to add is a low body fat percentage should not be the main effect that you're after, but rather the side effect. Right. Okay. So for people listening right now, if you, tr if you try to live a healthy life with your diet and your exercise and your sleep, the side effect of that will be a good, healthy, lean body fat percentage, whatever that means for you. Okay. If you chase the lean body fat, you oftentimes sacrifice all the other stuff. So the health starts to decline. So, and it's also a more sustainable approach psychologically. If I'm only looking in the mirror and trying to make sure that I stay a particular body fat percentage, that's a very hard way to keep a, a sustainable routine. But if I'm like monitoring how I feel, my health, my function, that's a, a lot easier. And then the side effect of which is, oh my God, I look at one more thing I'll add is the range. So I'd love to ask you guys this. Um, what is, have you guys identified the body fat percentage you tend to go in when you're doing, when you're the healthiest, when you feel the best? Um, for me, that number used to be, and I say used to, cause I'll add something here, used to be about, 11, 12%. 11, 12% is where I would fall 
when I was kind of doing everything right and it felt good and healthy and I wasn't trying to get too shredded or I wasn't trying to bulk too much. It was just, it felt good. Since going on TRT and using some peptides, that range, that number actually changed. Now my natural, my healthy body fat percentage range sits at about 9%. So it's something else to consider. Whereas before 9% wasn't necessarily healthy. I'd have to kind of push myself uh, to get there. Uh, nine to 11 for me. Okay. Nine to 11, I think is, um, is like the, the really good sweet spot. So and lower and higher than you notice. Yeah. Lower and higher. And I start to notice bad things. Nine to 11%. I feel phenomenal. And in, in close to those on both ends, I feel pretty damn good too. As you start to venture further and further from there. So you get sub 6%. Now I'm starting to see like my immune system's weak and yeah. like, I feel frail and I'm definitely not, I'm not sleeping the best. My libido starts to dive. Same thing on the other end of the spectrum. As I start creeping beyond 14, 15%, I start getting closer to 16, 17 north of 15%. I start to say so libido starts to dive a little bit. Sleep isn't as good. I feel lethargic. And so, yeah, 9 to 11 is kind of where you, I know you don't test body fat percentage, Justin. Yeah, I can it's feel probably like, higher than you guys. I can feel, <laughs> I can feel I you be like 20, 25. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. I would guess, this is a great example of individual variants. I would guess you're probably your healthiest around 15, 16. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. 15, 16. That's, you know that that's the number that you see a lot of athletes uh, tend to fall on that, that 15. But there's I a, feel there's like a, shit if I'm lower, I'll be honest with you guys. Yeah, if I'm like in the, 10 range or whatever which i've rarely done but like it's just it doesn't, it feel, just good. doesn't feel good at all yeah. yeah no there's a there's a good example right the three of us we're all a little bit different you and i adam are a little more similar, yeah well i think that, i think that's a perfect example like i'm more of an ectomorph like same. i definitely have a body type that uh is naturally i was the super skinny lean kid and yeah. so that's a, like if i were to just not track calories not exercise not do anything just go about my day eat when i felt hungry i wouldn't be this kind of real skinny frail frame that's kind of my 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 body type and what feels kind of natural to go that by the way yeah. I, and just another thing just to mention this individual variance thing it, it it's probably not true that your genetics put you in this super high body fat percentage and you're like oh this is just where i like to sit there there is a variance but it's within a particular range and i the reason why i'm saying this is you see people talk about like oh this is my genetics you know I'm a man. I'm at 27% body fat. This, no, probably not. That's probably not your genetics. It's probably a lot of lifestyle. I bet if you ate and, and, and worked out and did things in a healthy way, you'd probably fall under 20%. You know? Well, there's something to be you mentioned lifestyle that we didn't touch on that I think is a, a factor of our healthiest also. You know, one of the things it for me to be sub 9%, even 8%, 7%, it, it takes a level of sacrifice and discipline in my life that I don't think is the healthiest version of me either. That, I'm so glad you said that. That's a part like, of health. Like, you know, like I, in order to do that, I, I kind of have to say no to most all, you know, alcohol engagements with family and friends. Like I'm not eating my ice cream occasionally. I'm not having the desserts. I'm not being able to eat out very much. Like, to be sub, you know, eight, nine percent, I've got to be eating most of my stuff out of my Tupperware and yeah, I might feel pretty good physically at that leaner body fat percentage, but I, also, I don't psychologically and socially. It's a balance. It's not as great either. Like then I have to, I turn down things that I would not turn down. Like if I want, like really wanted to do something with family or friends. So uh, I think you have to also kind of factor that in, but also have the self-awareness to the point that you're making about being 27% saying, oh, this is just where my body likes to be. It's <laughs> like, there's also the other side of like, oh, well, I've drank every weekend for the last five weekends in a row. Like, is yeah, that yeah, really- be honest too. Yeah. Is yeah. that really social balance or am I now like getting borderline? I can't have a weekend without getting drunk. Like there's, there's, there's an extreme on all levels. Right. And so I do feel like when I start getting that lower single digit body fat percentage, I sacrifice a lot of social events with family and friends. Next question is from Jason Snurb. If you guys started a strength athletic event, what exercises and rules would you evoke? Huh. Oh, so this is a cool Schnurb. question. I know. I feel Sorry, like you made up that it. last yeah. name. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> we're, we're like 12 sometimes. I love it. Okay, so this is interesting um, because just off the top of my head, if, I were, if you were to look at strength, when people think strength, they think how much weight you can lift for one rep. But really, strength is a few different things. There's that kind of strength, like maximal strength. Right. Then there's uh, strength stamina, so the ability to um, 
perform with strength repetitively without fatiguing. Functional strength. Uh, well, functional strength would be how it applies to what you're doing. Right, right. And then there's uh, there, then there's a type of strength that gives you like grit. Yeah. Like like old to, man just uh, like be able to just perseverance. Yeah, like uh, like isometric strength would fall in there, right? Like the ability to hold something or just the kind of workload strength that I guess you would put under grit. So if I put together an athletic event. You know, I think I would want like all three of those because I can think of lots of people that would do good at one of those. Yeah. Very few people would have, would do well with all three of them. Well, where you would know? you put, where would you put multi-planar strength too? Because I think that would have to be in there somewhere. Something, there has to be a movement that challenges you in, in other than the sagittal plane too. Yeah. Other, otherwise you're missing out on that. I think that could Probably be stamina. in, yeah, I yeah. think that could be That's, in all of them almost. But yeah, I mean, you can, you, exactly, you can make a strength, uh, max strength out of it. Yeah. It would be, have to be some, like a bent press or a windmill or a movement that. So it, you could do that. For that's maximal. what I meant by functional strength. Yeah. That's, so you could do a maximal strength test with that. You could also do a stamina strength test. So functional, I mean, in terms of multiplanar, sorry. Yeah. You could probably put that in almost every category. So the, like, in, in other words, the movements themselves, that would be fun to put together. But what I would want to test would be those three things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, maximal, maximal stamina. I would and, want to put grip. something. I see like, what you're saying though. You want to make sure that you would test the body's ability, not just in the sagittal plane. That's right. Because because right? we already have any, we already have powerlifting any, events do that. Already. That's right. Yeah, powerlifting yeah. events already address what you just said yeah, right now. Yeah, I know. But you're talking about. an event where you have something like a Turkish get up, a bent press, a windmill, something that also says like I can move left to right or rotate my body and do it very strong and controlled. Yeah, yeah. I would want an exercise in there that highlights that. Yeah. My because yeah. My my favorite with that suggestion is the grit portion of it because I just don't feel like that's one of those uh, um, feats of strength that's very highlighted, you know, very often. Like you don't see that a lot in terms of like having to hold and then hold your body in position for a certain amount of time. That's like like super demanding and challenging. It's like it's one of those unsexy type of exercises that like <laughs> it's just it, it it's not popular for a reason. Listen, you know how many people listening right now? How many dads? that are listening right now who work out, do curls and deadlifts and bench presses. Then they have kids and they hold their two or three year old in their arm. And after about 10 minutes, they're like, my arm's going to fall off. I think off. it's going to fall off. Yeah. That is, that's grit. That's yeah. a different kind of strength. Yeah. And there's, there's, and you develop it differently. You train it differently. And it's a, it's a type of strength that you're going to want yeah. in the real world. I remember working in restaurants. So I was a 16 year old boy. I'd already been lifting weights for two years. I'm full of testosterone. I love working out, whatever. And I remember they were teaching me how to throw the pizza in the air and then how to carry the trays out. And I remember my arm and shoulder getting so – it's like, what is it, a five-pound tray? Not even. Yeah. But because I had to walk around and hold it, I didn't have the – this like this whatever that is, the isometric strength to do that. Yeah. You know? So I remember as a kid being like, oh, man, I could overhead press so much weight, but that little tray just made my hand – One of my favorites – this is kind of funny. You mentioned that. I was on this cruise with my brother and my family – and they were doing like a competition. They had really silly competitions. They had one that was like um, about popping like a balloon on somebody's lap and all this. It was like really weird. Like, <laughs> oh, so it looks like sexual. Yeah, I saw it was, that. It was awkward. Uh, but the one that I I decided to do was like you had to hold um, like these buckets uh, out wide, like you're doing a lateral raise, and you just had to hold it like that for and, time. Like, you have like no leverage, right? For time, and you just see people dropping like just like flies. Yeah. And, and I'm still holding it. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> veins just exploding everywhere. And then like, uh, I just love that. And it's like, nobody, nobody challenges themselves like that anymore. You know, you know who knew that the, the old wise bronze era strength athletes, Yeah, all of them performed exercises <laughs> and then feats of strength that would highlight stuff like that. Like, like we just talked about grit. There was a, a strong, there was a, a competitor, not a competitor. I don't know what you call him. He was a bronze era strength athlete, the mighty Adam. You, everybody need to look this guy up. He would do shit like this where he'd like hold, you know, like you know, cars from driving away or a carriage with a horse or he'd squeeze things together yeah. or bend bars like, like, and, and they just like a strength performance. Yes. Like, like, and, uh, and, so, and the reason why these athletes back then understood all these different versions of strength is because they were displaying strength in an era where everything was physical. Yeah. So it, if, oh, great, you could, it was relatable. It's yes. Like, yeah. You got to make it relatable to the real world. Like yeah. if you can do something, like, I don't know what that is right there right. Uh, that you lifted, but if you lifted a carriage, 
Yeah. Or you held something like I, you know, I do stuff like that all the time. Oh my God, you could bend a nail with your fingers. You know, I work with nails every day. Right. Like, and so they train that way and their physiques reflected it. If you look at their bodies were just, just they look like chiseled they carved out, out of granite. Iron. Well, I, I think this also highlights a lot of what we try and, and talk about on the show of, of why it's important to kind of move in and out of all the different programs that like we've written is the idea is that like, if you just stick to the like one type of training, one modality all the time, you're missing out on so many other aspects of strength. Totally. Strength isn't that basic where it's just like, oh, just because you could lift a, a dumbbell or a barbell up that's really heavy, it doesn't mean you're strong in all these other aspects. And so moving through all the different programs, especially with what we have planned for the rest of the year, I feel like we've done a pretty good Spoiler job alert. of, <laughs> well, I think we've done a good job of really addressing a lot of those things that we've communicated on the show. And if you, you know, slowly work your way through most of those programs. You you hit all those things. Just and then wait till you see what we got. Oh. Next question is from Ginger Wolf. How can I convince someone whose primary goal is to lose weight that they should take creatine? Yeah, the same way you convince them to lift weights. So if someone wants to lose weight, why is lifting weights so beneficial? Well, because muscle is very metabolically active. It's calorically expensive. When you build it or you send the signal to build it and fuel your body appropriately, it speeds up your metabolism. Now you burn more calories all the time on your own, which makes getting lean easier um, and definitely makes staying lean easier. So how does creatine uh, fall into that? Well, creatine helps build muscle. Yeah. Creatine improves metabolic health. It improves mitochondrial function. Creatine, in essence, helps you speed up your metabolism. In fact, in fact, I bet you I don't even know if they've done the study, but I bet simply taking creatine causes the body to burn a little bit more calories on its own, even without anything else happening. That's probably not a huge mm. effect, but just that you're, the fact that your mitochondria has more ATP, mm -hmm. I bet you, you see a little metabolic boost from creatine. So whether you want to lose or gain weight or- Yeah, well, I think health. the first thing you would have to correct the person that's saying they just want to lose weight. And it's like, do you want to just lose weight or do you want to lose fat? And if you want to lose fat, then one of the best things that we could possibly do is to build muscle. And if you want to build muscle better and faster, then creatine is a, is a supplement that supports that. To me, that's like the easy end all. Like, but you have to first correct where the the premise of the question, right? If someone is saying something like, "I just want to lose ten pounds," why should I take creatine? Well, it's, well, do you just want to lose ten pounds on the scale? Because if that's mm -hmm. not that's not that hard to do, starve your body, get on a treadmill, run every single day for three weeks, you'll lose your ten pounds, or cut a leg off, you'll lose ten pounds. No, what you're saying you want to do is you want to lose. 10 pounds of fat. If you want to lose 10 pounds of fat, one of the best, fastest, and sustainable ways you can do that is actually speeding your metabolism up and building more muscle. One of the best, if not the best supplement to aid in that would be creatine. Yeah. I'm trying to look up and see if I can find any studies that support this. This is obviously, we're do I'm doing this while, while we're on the show. I'll try and find some, but if it helps you build muscle, that'll boost the metabolism. But I have a hunch that if you did a study, and I don't know if they've done this already, that you took a bunch of people, had them take creatine, do no exercise, nothing different, that you would see a metabolic boost from the creatine alone. Yeah. I bet you would. I would imagine I bet that you would was see the case. That. Well, yeah. I think you would see it just in, in energy, right? With somebody who is, if you took 10 people, well, you get no more, create, both, yeah. all, like say all, say 20 people all want to lose body fat, right? right. 10, 20 people. 10 people take creatine and 10 don't, I think you'll see a difference in performance in the 10 that took it. Of course. And you get so, better brain activity, better function of the mitochondria, which all translates health, into yeah. more calorie burning. So. It's a wellness, all those other attributes like we brought up too, you know, about, you know, this potential use for, well, cognitive health and all yep. those things. So yeah, I just think it's, it's one of those, those types of supplements that's so well studied that it's probably a good idea. You're dumb to not take yeah. it essentially. Look, if you like Mind Pump, Head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a bunch of free guides that can help you with all kinds of health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam.